tangi te titi, ka tangi te kākā, ka tangi hoki kawao, tihei Māori ora. Uh, Papatū nuku e tāko te mai ki wahu, tēnā koe, e te whare e whakamahana te tātai, tēnā koe, e ngā mati ona marae kātō te motu, uh, haere, haere, haere. Uh, te iwi kāinga, te ati awa rangatira, uh, kā nui te mihi tēnā koe. Uh, rau rangatira mā, tēnā koutou kātō. Uh, e ngā rangatira uh, o te EHF, uh, tēnā koutou kātō. Uh, e ngā manuhiri o te au, uh, nau mai, nau mai, haere mai ki Aotearoa nei. Kia ora everyone, uh, ko Nigel Bickle taku ingoa, uh, te kai whakahaere tua whenua. Um, I'm Nigel Bickle, a great pleasure to be here, really grateful for the opportunity of talking with you all. As Joseph said, um, really um, cool relationship uh, with the Edmund Hillary Fellowship and the Global Impact Visa. Um, what started as a pretty interesting conversation in a smaller environment than this out in Whiteman's Valley a few years ago that could never have imagined would evolve into uh, this as it stands today and store a really exciting future in front of us. So to all of the um, fellows, can I say um, congratulations and um, good on you for wanting to be here to try and change the course of humanity from uh, New Zealand. We're really excited um, to have you have you all and um, yeah, pretty inspired um, every day by um, uh, the power of entrepreneurship when it's combined with the values of truly believing that we can solve some of the biggest problems facing uh, the world by uh, this, this sort of way of working. So I'm here, um, first time talking to New Frontiers in a new job, other than being the head of immigration in New Zealand. And my new job is the head of what's called the Provincial Development Unit and the centrepiece of uh, the new coalition government's um, agreement called the uh, Provincial Growth Fund, which is a $3 billion fund that I want to um, kind of give you a little bit of information about um, today. But before we do that, I'm just going to um, play a, a quick little video. The provinces have hidden gems that haven't been discovered yet, and unless we evolve and develop, New Zealand will never reach its true potential. People sometimes forget how much talent there really is in provincial New Zealand. It's definitely been challenging trying to start a business in Northland. I felt a bit isolated and like there wasn't as much resources and help for me. The regions, are the guts, the kidneys, the lungs of the whole country and the cities of the brains and you know, just like in a body, we all need each other. We've never seen a regional collaboration at this level. So it does present the opportunity for all of our collective will and minds to come together to solve some of the broad challenges. The Provincial Growth Fund is really going to help those regions to unlock the potential that they've had sitting there waiting. We can now identify the opportunities and have a fund and government support to help back those regions up and achieve outcomes which are going to be fantastic for New Zealand. So what I want to say now is um a nei he whai kōrero o te rangatira Norman Kirk uh, i tēnei wahei rongo mō tātou katoa. E wha ono tēno hea hea, uh, ko te uh, aroa tuatahi, te tuaroa he mahitahi, uh, te tuatoro uh, uh, he, uh, te, te whānau mō te whari, um, uh, te tua uh, whā uh, kia whai tūmanāko uh, te reanga. So there was a leader in New Zealand, a Prime Minister in the 1970s of New Zealand, uh, Norman Kirk, the late Norman Kirk, who said, you know, when you boil it all down, uh, the things that matter for New Zealanders and therefore New Zealand, it's actually pretty simple, and Kiwis don't actually ask for a lot. They ask for someone to love, somewhere to live, somewhere to work, and something to aspire to for their families and communities. And I think that's a pretty cool encapsulation of the kaupapa of what we're trying to do here. And the reality is, in a New Zealand context, 40% uh, of the people of New Zealand live outside of our urban centres. And for a whole lot of reasons, um, some of our regions haven't done so well. And groups of um, populations in our uh, country, whether we're talking about 80,000 kids that aren't in education, employment or training, or uh, some of our um, population, whether it be uh, Māori or Pacific that don't enjoy the same level of employment as New Zealand European or the sort of say, wages in the economy. And you overlay that um, also in terms of all the global drivers that you guys understand is um, our economy is also transitioning as we have to think about um, some new futures in terms of whether it be uh, as a primary producing uh, nation or 
um, in terms of the production of, of energy, uh, a future focus on food, energy that's t different from the economy today, uh, a, a more digital economy that's changing the nature of work. Now these transitions will happen over a period of time, um, but really the fund uh, is a $3 billion investment fund over the next three years that's looking to achieve a number of things. It's looking to be very focused on the regions, so it's investment that's not going to go to our main urban centres, that looks to enhance economic development opportunities, looking to creating uh, sustainable um, jobs, boosting social inclusion and participation, trying to build resilience in our communities, and also looking to uh, contribute towards uh, the, the aspiration that the new government set around uh, a carbon zero economy. And so what are the things that we can do to um, help support uh, that uh, program? So what we're really looking to do with a fund that was announced five weeks ago is $3 billion of investments to make over the next three years. There are three tiers to the fund uh, where we're looking to invest in regional initiatives and capacity uh, building, to invest in uh, sectors, uh, and this will include the forestry sector and the government's commitment to planting a billion trees over the next uh, 10 years, and in the sorts of remedial um, infrastructure that will go to supporting our regions to um, grow, to tr help transition some of our sectors, to leverage some of the undoubted potential and capacity that we've got in our regions, but that is ultimately about creating economic activity, not in an, in an end in itself, but economic activity that will create more and better jobs, that we deliberately want to move some of our young rangatahi, our, our neat population, those 80,000 kids that aren't in education, employment and training, and some of the people that haven't benefited from uh, the growth that's incurred in New Zealand into some better opportunities for themselves and their families. Over the last few years, we have um, had a programme of work. This is not the first time a government's thought about how do we support the regions to uh, develop and, and thrive. So a lot of our regions have well thought through regional action plans that look to leverage what they see as their comparative economic advantages. I guess the, the challenge that I was really excited about talking with you all today is the opportunity to, as entrepreneurs and innovators that have uh, bought into the whole excitement about this kaupapa of making uh, the world, and I guess the opportunity in this context is New Zealand and our regions a more equitable uh, place, is how do you potentially uh, get to collaborate and co-create with some of our regions and sectors a set of uh, propositions where there is uh, you know, certainly my first time as a public servant of 30 years, uh, the first time that I can remember where the government has actually allocated $3 billion to uh, invest. So we are going to be looking to um, have a multiplier effect here. This isn't $3 billion of government grants. We are looking to get alongside and for, for co-funded co -funded ventures with the private sector, local government, with sectors of the New Zealand's economy, uh, that is about creating those um, opportunities to grow the performance of some of our uh, some of our regions. So, um, I just wanted to make the opportunity uh, known to you uh, today. I've got a bunch of collateral that you can pick up about uh, the the fund, where you can find out some more information, who you might want to talk to. But I think that there is a huge amount. Um, of opportunity here. What I know about um, the cohorts that have come through the Edmund Hillary Fellowship, I mean, this goes to things around uh, our environment, some of the transitions uh, that have been driven by climate change, digital economy, the different types of initiatives that we look, want, want to in terms of skills and capacity building um, in our, our region, so from an education um, point of view. So there's a real opportunity, I think, for uh, you as fellows to think about how you might get alongside um, some of the partners in regional New Zealand to come up with some investable uh, sort of propositions that go to our uh, sort of shared uh, shared interests. So that's probably all I wanted to say today was to um, one say it's a pleasure to be here.
two, to congratulate you on your selection as, as fellows, to make you aware of the co-papa of this program, the $3 billion Provincial Growth Fund, and to leave you with a challenge around, if, if you want to help change the course of humanity and make the world a more equitable and beautiful place in a New Zealand context, that is about certain groups of our population and certain regions of our economy. And without knowing where everyone's come from, I know one of the things uh, that became sharper and more important for me in terms of having an international lens through my immigration work is we ignore that stuff at our peril. And when I've looked at what's happened in Europe or the United States in terms of people going, well, actually, I'm not buying into all these norms that have held for decades around the benefits of globalisation and trade when I don't have a job anymore or I'm working twice as long for less money or what we're doing to our environment. That is the massive opportunity in front of us with the focus of the next three years and $3 billion. So I'm really excited about what we might be able to do together. And so I'm basically, as I always have with the Global Impact Visa and the Fellowship, um, I'm looking to be inspired by what you guys um, uh, so, sort of can do. So that's it from me. Pleasure to be here. Kia kaha, kia manawa nui, um, and look forward to spending the afternoon with you all. Kia ora everyone. <laughs>